انا عرفت بحالي اسمي علاء الدين المبيض وحاليا تخلت على شركه روبن هود حاليا انا تيك ليد تبع الابلكيشن سكيورتي اوكي سو انا هلا بفيجاس سو فيجاس معروفه بالبارتيز رايت هي يعني فيجاس عندها اكبر نايت كلابس بالعالم سو تخيل مثلا انت تكون عندك حفله مثلا وتجيب ناس عندك على البارتي وهدول الناس قالوا لك اوه كان وي انفايت اذر فريندز طبعا انت بتقول لهم اوكي يعني اتس فاين بس تخيل هدول اذر فريندز كمان جابوا اذر فريندز بصير عندك مثلا بالحفله ناس لايك يو اكشلي دونت نو هاي انالوجي انا بحب استخدمها موضوع الاوبن سورس يعني فعليا انت لما تنزل تعمل انستول للايبرري انت مش بت تعمل انستول للايبرري نفسها انت بتجيب جنجل في اذر ديبندنسيز دي كول ات ديبندنسيز اور معتمده عليها يعني انت اللايبرري نفسها مثلا خلينا نحكي عندك لايبرري بتعمل بارسنج لاكس ام ال مثلا فايلز بس هاي اللايبرري نفسها in order to, for the library to parse xml files it needs another library مثلا called foo هلا foo ممكن كمان لها other dependencies بسموها nested dependencies I'll talk about this um, فتخيل انت مثلا تعمل install application انت مش بس تعمل install the libraries اللي انت meant to install انت تعمل install the thousands of libraries بعطيكم examples هلا كمان شوي سو so, رح نحكي عن مشكله الاوبن سورس اتاكس على الاوبن سورس ديبندنسيز كيف ممكن نعمل ريميديشن كيف ممكن نحل المشكله اند سم فيوتشر ورك هلا ال كل كلنا احنا بال بالستوك نعرف قديش الفاليو تبعت الاوبن سورس مهمه بصراحه uh, يعني يعني معظم ابلكيشنز العالم مبنيه هلا relies on open source like it's impossible to build something now without open source um, and you know it embraces the the concepts of the, don't reinvent the wheel uh, just use existing libraries so how the sad كثير موضوع الاكسلريشن in, in the a lot of areas like machine learning موضوع uh, ai um, like هلا كل libraries الموجوده for machine learning and ai Uh, NumPy, for example, is a good example. Look at NumPy and see how many dependencies it uses. It's just thousands. But that means also acceleration, the uh, development and uh, deployments even. But the problem is that have the same frustration with the open source. Let's talk about why. For example, you come in the morning. We have Monday in America, but you have one. تيجي الصبح على الشغل تعمل قهوه تفتح الكمبيوتر تفتح على النيوز ما بتشوف الا ذس تايتل سيريس ريموت كود اكسكيوشن ان ون اوف ذا بوبولار اوبن سورس جافا باكجز تخيل مثلا انت عندك 5 50 ابلكيشن اند ذي ار اول لايك بيلت ان جافا طب هلا انت كيف بدك تعرف انك انت فولنبل uh, تحكي لي مثلا اوكي اي جو اند لوك ات ذا كود Sure, but لما انت look at the code, you only see the first order dependency. انت you are seeing only that if you included this library directly in your code. What if that library that you included, um, that, so like, what, what if that library, اللي خلينا نحكي اسمها فو, has this remote code execution in a nested dependency? You won't be able to see it. So هاي مشكلة. So, راح تنجن وراح تبلش تجمع هاي الاسئله شو الفيرجنز ار امباكتد مين بيستخدم هذا الباكج شو السيف فيرجن حتى تو ابديت تو شو الامباكتد سيرفيسز لايك ثاوزندز اوف كويشنز ذوس ار جست اكزامبلز فتخيل مثلا انت عندك ال... انت انجينيرنج لايك خلينا نحكي سكيورتي براكتيشنر بتشتغل بشركه وعندك اول ذيس بروبلمز Um, ما عندك وقت طبعا اوكي okay. سو so, وهي المشكله على فكره يعني مش شغله انه والله اه وي جونا سولف ات تومورو اند ايفريثينج از جونا بي فاين يو هاف تو وري اباوت ذس ذس از ريبورت فروم اوبن سورس كومباني ذات ديز وذ ذس بروبلم اند طلع الاكسلريشن 
like huge وهلا عم بتزيد يعني هلا الاوبن سورس ديبندنسيز كمان عم المشكله تاع عم بتزيد اكثر واكثر واكثر سو so, ما في سلو داون الموضوع هذا موضوع مهم على فكره كثير يعني كثير شركات تتجاهله وفي شركات طبعا كثير عملها بريتش من ورا هذا الموضوع زي مثلا اقراوا عن ايكو فاكس بريتش واقراوا عن ذا ايفنت ستريم باكج مالشس باكج سو so, هذا اللي خلانا انه نفكر بسوليوشن للموضوع طبعا اذا بتفكر انت على موضوع الاوبن سورس سكيورتي انت بتحكي طب اوبن سورس سكيورتي يعني هاو از ات ديفرنت يعني انا عندي مثلا سيم كونسبت سيم سيم بروبلمز از اني اذر سكيورتي دومين رايت اتس اكشلي نوت اتس اتس توتالي ديفرنت انا اول تيل يو واي سو تخيل مثلا انت عندك لايبرري اي And this library pulls uh, library B as direct dependency. So under library C, uh, library C pulled from B. Okay, and that's what I call indirect dependencies. هاي المشكلة. يعني لما أنت تطلع الكود بدك تشوف تخيل إنه C is vulnerable. مثلاً كيف بدك تعرف؟ و D نفس الشيء relies on C. طبعا it goes like a lot more depth in that. Um, مشكلتنا بالopen source dependencies إنه It creates what we call dependency hell. So, like, تخيل مثلاً هاي libraries اللي أنت ينستول تخيل library C exists in another library called foo, and it's a direct dependency or in, or nested dependency. And then every dependency brings a different version. And so, like, how is alignment going to work here? So, and you like imagine you installing like an application that relies on hundred thousand dependency. تخيل like dependency هل قديش راح تكون problem مين بيح... مين بيحذر شو هذا الشيء؟ العين قريب <تصفيق> شوي it looks like شو اسمه database graph قريب على فكرة هي شكلها زي الجيلي فيش صح؟ اه اي سي ذات از ويل سوري هاي actually PyPy dependency graph. So uh, this guy Olivier, شو عمل uh, عمل عمل download the dependencies in PyPy. PyPy اللي هي dependency manager for Python. وبنى dependency graph between libraries. طلع مع هذا الشكل. Um, صراحة أنا ما شفته هذا يعني قلت واو يعني. And like dependency. Uh, okay. Every dependency. Yeah, every wow. dependency in pipeline. Okay. Um, when you do zoom, you'll see like the same graph inside, like one of those. Like, if you do zoom, zoom, like inside, um, but you see the same graph here inside. So, like, okay. it's like huge. It's like, imagine, for example, you have to find a vulnerability in, in like, imagine you have to install, for example, all these libraries, and there's a vulnerability in one of the Python packages. And you have to find like a solution. You need to first to identify the services that are using this package. How are you going to do this? Right? Um, high Maven dependency graph. Maven in Java, if you use Java, this is the Maven dependency graph. He's like a uh, galaxy in the space. And again, if you zoom, like <laughs> it's huge. Um, مشكلة ال dependencies إنه مش بس vulnerabilities كمان malicious code آه وهي مشكلة كتير عويصة يعني تخيل مثلا أنت بالجراف هذا يكون عامل مثلا الجراف أنت تبعك بالشركة تبعتك ويكون one of these packages is malicious يعني زي كأنك أنت عم بتدور على ورقة بغابة كيف بدك تلاقي؟ so وهي malicious packages صارت يعني مش مش شغلة يعني خيال it's a real thing uh, event stream um, uh, flat map stream event stream relies on flat map stream as a package uh, get injected with malicious code that steals bitcoin stuff um, and uh, every company gets like freaked out because because of this because you have to find all the services that I'm using it. the thing that got injected it was malicious but was it also useful 
انه كانت في شيء انه واز ات تروجن هورس تقريبا انه ات لوكس يوسفل واتس يوسفل بس بعدين ات ذا سيم تايم اتس دوينج ذا باد ثينجز ولا از ات جاست يعني ات واز يوسفل الايفنت ستريم از فيري فيموس باكج سو تو سي ذاتس ا بروبلم اتس نوت لايك انه هو اصلا فيروس اند بيبل انستول ات نو ايفنت ستريم از ا بوبولار باكج ا لوت اوف بيبل لايك If you look up now on GitHub, see how many people installing Event Stream. But that package got the uh, the maintainer got uh, I think handovers to someone who's not trusted and injected code. And because that package was installed on like millions of machines, suddenly how the package uh, our attacker get access to all these millions of machines. خيال. So it's a big deal. And كل الناس عم يستخدموه. اذا كمان هاندلنج كمان سامز لايك انه مثلا الفولنربيلتي ماشي وباتش ذا فولنربيلتي وخلصنا انه ذاتس ذا بيست كيس سيناريو بس هاي انه اتس ماليشس هاو دو يو باتش سمثينج ذات اوريدي باد هو نفسه اللي تخلص منه بدك يو نيد تو فايند ان الترناتيف صار يس يو نيد فيرست يو نيد تو فايند لايك سوليوشن مش هيك بس بدك تعمل كمان انسيدنت بدك تفتح انسيدنت لانه يو ونت تو سي لايك وات ديد ذيس باكج كوز رايت لايك ديد دي هل هو الباكج هذا خلى ال ال information to be leaked مثلا or uh, you know خلى uh, المعلومات يعني شو اللي انسرق عندك من السيرفرز هاي مشكله كمان um, so بتسال طب اوكي okay, ماشي why is it bad uh, اول شيء cheap to carry out like this guy who um, who was just a maintainer like push the code and like oh people like accepted and Um, it's really hard to detect. Like, it's not like viruses. Like, oh, I know, like this pattern, because somebody could build a library, and what it does is just sends bash history. For example, is that malicious? Maybe. <laughs> How do you know? Right. Um, so it's really <laughs> hard to detect. And uh, blast rate is compromised. Like, had the event stream package. It was installed on like millions of machines. So. I'm sure like that person get access to millions of machines at immediately like as soon as like people updated their packages to that version get access immediately and that's the thing about open source is if you don't, you're not pinning versions then uh, you get the next version automatically so crazy so keep file pal malicious package um, actually get introduced يعني اذا في مليشس باكج كيف اصلا هاي انت عندك بالشركه ممكن يدخل يعني بالمليشس باكج اول شيء بنسميه تايب اوف سكوادنج تايب اوف سكوادنج انه الديفلوبر بدل ما يعمل انستول للرايت باكج بخربط بحرف وبيعمل انستول لانذر باكج سو اللي بصير هون بدل ما انستول ان بي ام انستول اكسبرس بيعمل ان بي ام انستول اكسبرس سو اتاكرز بيعرفوا هذا الشيء فبروح بيعمل ريجستر لهدول التايبو باكجز وبستنوا حتى انت تعمل له انستول باي ميستيك ان اف ذا هابنز ذا ميز يو انستول ذا مليشس باكج ذا دو ذا سيم ثينج وذ ويب سايتس دونت ذي مثلا فيسبوك اذا yes. تكتب حرف غلط راح يوديكم حل ثاني وبصير بعدين بسوي لك فيشنج سكان بيسكلي يس ذي كول ذا هوموغراف اتاك يس ذاتس واي ذي هاف باني كود سو لايك المشكله هذا الموضوع مش بس بالاحرف انه انت خبر خربطت كتبت فيس كوب مثلا نو no. في لاتين لترز مثلا شكلها زي الاو مثلا الابل مثلا اي بي بي ال اي الاي في لايك لاتين لتر اي او سرياني او سمثينج حرف الاي لايك اتس امبوسيبل تو نو لايك ذيس از اي او اي ان سرياني So, هلا البراوزر شو عملوا؟ عملوا شيء اسمه bunny code. So, they translate that letter Syrianic to bunny code so you can see it. It's like hex, hex representation. اه اوكي بفوت لك اياها عشان تعرف اذا هو بفوت لك اياها اوكي يا امم so yeah that's that's a big problem. Uh, and وصارت اكثر من مره. Uh, في عندك في باكج اسمه كولوراما كان مشهور كثير. برضه واحد uh, عمل له ريجستر ل يو. و uh, we'll get a lot of installs it's like a real problem uh, المشكله الثانيه اللي بسموها package masking uh, so package masking موضوع زنخ شوي اللي هو انت مثلا عندك بالشركه عامل انستول مثلا لايبرري اسمها فو uh, مثلا 1.0 اوكي okay? 
هلا تخيل انه هذا الاسم فو يونيك تو يور كومباني سو انه ما حدا بيعرفه تخيل واحد برا عمل انستول uh, باكج اسمه فو uh, بس فيرجن 2.0 هلا لما تعمل ابديت الشركه عندك بتاخذ اوتوماتيكلي 2.0 which is a malicious package شوف كيف بيشتغل انت هاي ديفلوبر عملت ببلش لايبرري كولد كومباني دوت ليب دوت اكس 1.2 طبعا عملت لها ببلش للانترنال ريبوزيتوري اتاكر عرف هذا الشيء راح سمى اللايبرري اكزاكتلي لايبرري كومباني دوت ليب دوت اكس بس اعطاها فيرجن 99.99 اللي صار انه حط في مالشس كود هلا انت لما تعمل ابديت عندك بالشركه بوم It's gonna pull the latest version, which is 99. So it's gonna ignore 1.2, and that means your malicious package is now internal. Um, some people call dependency confusion now, uh, but uh, when I presented this, there wasn't. It wasn't known as dependency confusion, so I called it package masking. The other problem is ownership transfer. هذا اللي صار اتوقع بموضوع الايفنت ستريم انه تخيل مثلا انت مش فاضي تشتغل على الاوبن سورس اعطيت اللايبرري لصاحبك قلت له هي مان تيك ات اي دونت هاف تايم تو ورك اون ات وصاحبك مثلا طلع فور سم ريزن ماليشس او اعطاه لشخص ثاني ماليشس راح عمل ايش؟ اللايبرري اوريدي انستولد يعني اوريدي يوزد باي ثاوزندز اوف بيبل سو شو اللي بيعمله؟ بروح ب سوري بيحط فيها ماليشس كود كيف بدك تعرف طب هلا انه فيها مالشس كود؟ ما حدا راح يعرف الا حدا يشوف الكود ويطلع عليه اند نوز ذات اتس مالشس. المشكله الثالثه اللي هي دانجلينج ريفرنسز في لايبرز بيكونوا حاطين مثلا هارد كودد يو ار ال زي هيك مثلا. المشكله انه هاي مثلا دومينز ممكن تكون اوريدي دازنت اكزيست اني مور. يعني الدومين نفسه بتكون مثلا حالة عم ريجستر قبل 10 سنين وناسي وخلص وراح. الاتاكرز شو بروح بيعملوا؟ بروح بيعملوا ريجستر لهذا الدومين اند ذن ذي ويل اوتوماتيكلي جيت اني انفورميشن فروم اول ذا بيبول ذات انستول ذيس لايبرري. اني كويشن سو فار؟ نو جود فور مي بس بذكركم جميعا اي حدا ذات وود لايك هي ايش اسمه؟ Any one that would like to uh, participate, Adi, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Please point. feel free to ask any question. Uh, this is important, Sarah. Oh, and you, and you see the chat on Adi? Allah, I am sorry, I'm not seeing the chat because I'm doing share my screen. But I'm sure there's a chat on the chat. Okay, I'll see you later. Thank you. Okay, so let's talk about the dependency confusion. Um, so we have like 20 minutes, uh, so we'll try to like. Go a little bit fast. So, هلا المشكلة إنه الأتاكرز لما يختاروا package حتى to infect, they look at the popularity and reputation of the package. بتطلع مثلاً على direct and transitive dependencies. شوف قديش ممكن تكون. كيف the package class is being used and stuff like that. حدا ممكن يقول لي شو الغريب في الصورة هاي? Any guesses? I actually have none. Sammy, it looks like something you work with us. Sammy, you want to say something? I'm on mute, Sammy. Okay, I don't know if I'm on mute. Are there cycles with dependency or do you want to imagine? Yes, this is a good observation. Um, so high library, um, basically, like look at, start from the left side. Um, basically it has like thousands of dependencies, right? Um, all these dependencies and like every dependency relies on other dependencies and it's just miserable. But look on the left side, how many contributors to this project? طبعاً هاي مش الفول ليست. Like this is a screenshot. So imagine 
one of those contributors get compromised. Just one. And using that person, واحد من هذول الناس, you can use their permission to push malicious code to this library, which look how many dependencies. It's just amazing. So عشان أحكي لكم قديش المشكلة like deep and it's really hard, you know. طبعا إذا واحد من هذول ما عندهم two FA um, and you you compromise the account, then like خلاص game over. Um, of course, if they have two FA, they probably protected, but it depends on the two FA. Okay, so كيف بنعملهم infection? Um, as I said, بعمل compromise the maintainer account. Sometimes they send obfuscated commit to the maintainer, like بيبعتوا له commit and like I don't understand this. I'm just gonna approve it. Um, I'm about compromise the maintainer laptops. Put the malware there, or the I compromise CI/CD maintainer pipeline. Shift the tier and Jenkins pipelines on the internet, which is crazy for open source dependencies. Like anyone can go and just like modify the code and inject like malicious code. Um, internal package override. Keep how the sheep is here. Head into developer. I will commit, build, and build a version called 1.5. And you have like a continuous delivery platform, maybe Spinnaker, and you publish the code into uh, your Amazon AMI. Try must be compromised developer, or position internal attacker, or malicious internal, or malicious malicious insider. شو بيعمل؟ بيعمل commit لنفس الكود. بس 1.6 with malicious code. The next time you build, the your your pipeline is gonna pick the highest version, which is 1.6. So it ends up having that malicious code being installed on the server. So كيف نقدر نحمي حالنا؟ في عندك إشي اسمه Scope registries. Uh, scope registries means in inta tamil publish the internal scopes. High internal scopes, it won't fetch from outside and it won't um, have the problem of like pick the highest version. It's going to always pick from the internal scope registries. So, hi, one way to solve this problem. Uh, package signing, make sure in the uh, packages that I want to publish, it's signed and checked on the server. Because in terms of the character of the novel, the developer who knows the work sign, and you might say like, oh, maybe the attacker actually compromised the laptop and they can do it. Yes, but package signing requires two FA, two-factor authentication, which means when you sign, it's gonna send you like do a push or something or UB key, and it's gonna ask you to approve. So it's unlikely to happen, right? Dependency locking to avoid malicious packages. Uh, of course, you make sure like continuous integration, continuous deployment is uh, hardened and secure. Uh, you want to use proxy to force internal packages to take precedence over external one. Artifactor, for example, has implemented a new feature to do that. And for maintainers, please use 2FA. If you are like an open source maintainer, um, you're one of the like primary targets. So please use two-factor authentication if it's allowed. Like for npm or Python or other packages. في كمان إيش اسمه I guess this would work اللي هو ال signing لل commits لازم يكون verified. Oh yeah. So package signing and commit. Package signing نفس الشيء yes okay. صح. One hundred percent. Okay. Um. So let's talk about handling third party dependencies with care. So uh, في concept اسمه shift left. Shift left in إنت بتحاول to get security early in the process. So, but then, for example, if you do scanning and everything after you deploy, you try to do all the things before you get out from the developer laptop. So you catch vulnerabilities early. I'm not a, I'm, I'm a big fan of shift left. I don't think that's the only approach, though. Some companies may do a different approach. Modern shirkat and her microservice architecture. Which means uh, polyglot, a lot of languages. You ha they have flexible deployments and works well in the cloud. 
بس كمان آه لما تعمل ديزاين لموضوع ال نحكي سوليوشن لموضوع الاوبن سورس ديبندنسيز لازم تيك انتو كونسيدريشن هذول الشغلات سو so لازم تكم اب وذ لايك برنسبلز لايك سكيلابيلتي يو ونا ميك شور اتس سكيلابل اف يو ار نوت لايك رننج ا لوت اوف ابس يو هاف تو وري اباوت سكيلابيلتي بس اتس وان ثينج تو كيب ان مايند بدك تعمل اوتوميشن از ماتش از يو كان تخيل انت التاسك اللي اعطيتك اياه اون ماندي يو هاف تو فايند لايك وير ذس سيريس فولنابيلتي ان جافا اكزيست You can do this like every day. You have to automate this. Um, <clears throat> efficiency. There is always vulnerabilities in open source. There is always. So you want to make sure that you won't disrupt your developers all the time. Uh, you want to make sure it's compatible. Um, any updates that you issue to developers, you don't want to break their application. And you want to also make sure that you're guiding developers to the right thing. So what is the approach? Oh, uh, the approach is simple. As any vulnerability management program, discovery, triage, remediation. But it's a little bit like different. Um, so discovery. كيف أصلاً أنت راح تعرف عن موضوع open source dependencies, security problems? Um, في عندك three sources: NVD, CVE, uh, mailing lists. Of course, you can sign up, مثلاً لا other like. Directly, like pull information from AWS and from uh, uh, Oracle Clouds and stuff like that about most open source vulnerabilities, but those are like main sources. Uh, you can build like automated crawlers. So the crawler is just going to basically fetch all the dependencies and build uh, <coughs> a CVE feed. How the CVE feed بيحتوي على packages information uh, that are either malicious or vulnerable and the impacted versions. Um, <clears throat> building OSS vulnerability intelligence, uh, sorry, you're pulling from uh, OSS vulnerability intelligence sources, say, uh, victims, DP, uh, T2SEC, uh, exploit DB, V feed, um, Von feed, or Von DB, uh, all those great sources to pull, pull information from. Taban feed commercial OSS feeds. Uh, بدك يكون في ميتا داتا معينة حتى تقدر تعمل automation مثلا description of vulnerability لما تسأل developer hey can you fix this بدك تعطيه like reasoning why uh, بدك تعرف إذا في exploit in the wild about this uh, like struts has exploit in the wild مثلا struts uh, java package uh, بدك تعرف إذا it's malicious or not and that's like a very big question mark like how do you know if it's malicious um, You know it's malicious because somebody reported it, so you know about the previous ones, but you won't know about the future ones unless it's reported. Unless you basically come up with like, like Sam is doing PhD, مثلا, he like come up with uh, um, like part, as part of his dissertation and know, can you find malicious packages using like specific patterns in machine learning or something. Um, بدك تعرف كمان إذا الباكج is vulnerable or not meaning that the vulnerable dependency has like like where the vulnerability exists is matter, matters a lot so now تعرف أنت الجس جيسون تبني جيسون vulnerability feed هلا بدك API هلا ال API عشان تعمل search أنت بال infrastructure تبعتك بدك تعمل إشي اسمه dependency graph dependency graph هو عبارة عن اللي وردكم إياه قبل شوي اللي هو Building a database of all the dependencies between all the open source dependencies. Um, so, في ناس بيعتمدوا على manifest file, but it's not sufficient. ليش؟ تخيل مثلا عندك npm install uh, load dash um, and you give it like uh, delta 4.0.0. هلا carrot or delta is on these things in npm, meaning like install anything. Um, I can't remember the difference between Delta and uh, uh, and Carrots, but one of them, like, make sure you only pump the version to the major and make sure you pump the version to minor only. So you actually don't know what version has in, been installed on the server. So how did the problem not work? What's the solution? This system that we were working on Netflix, I'm not working on it, I'm working on it, but... 
الطريقه اللي بيعملها ممكن يعني هي معروفه نحكي عنها كثير انه انت بتعمل انت يو لوك ات ذا ديبندنسيز ان ذا ببلشينج when you publish the library. So basically what do you do is you look at the jar that is like jar as an example, could be NPM, anything. You grab the metadata, you do recursive builds, and then you build the dependency graph. Uh, so that's why I'm like, it's gonna skip it like really quick. Uh, you do the same thing with Debian, you scan the content, you pull the jars, you grab the metadata, you build dependency graphs. Um, هذا بصراحة بده موضوع ثاني لحاله يعني انه how do you actually build an effective dependency graph uh, you do the same thing with AMI you scan and then you pull the Debians you scan for the file you pull the jars and you grab the data and you deploy you build, you build the dependency graph okay so تخيل مثلا عندنا هلا dependency graph جاهز um, what do you need to do next is لما يكون عندك الميتا data انت هاي الفيرجن هاي الباكج that is vulnerable zookeeper مثلا uh, so you just query the system. Uh, we call it Astrid uh, when I was at Netflix. And you just basically pull the impacted services, meaning all the servers and applications that are using this package. Okay. Okay, so now we have discovery. Um, we, we already discovered like where it is actually installed. Now, the problem in is no, when you do that, you're going to find that that vulnerable package exists in like a thousand applications or something. But you're not going to like go and say like, hey, everyone update, please. You have to do some triaging. So you want to focus on the things that actually matters, right? Things that uh, presents the most risk for your organization. So Talana had a risk strategy table, which is basically like, think about it in now. We need those these two things or four things. عشان ادر احنا ادر نعمل تريجين. CVSS application risk is the vulnerable method executed. Active exploit is internet facing. And application risk, um, it's relatively like depends on how your organization. يعني مثلاً أنت مثلاً ب bank industry like the application risk is different than uh, مثلاً عندك مثلاً site لل entertainment or something. So, hey, example, for uh, example, application, let's is internet facing. Okay, there is an active exploit in the white for the package. How do we know from the feed that we built? It it comes up with like a lot of information. Uh, sometimes it's not easy though to get this information. Is the formal method executed? That's also another talk. <laughs> Basically, you have to find to grab the vulnerable method, and you see it during runtime if it's executed. Uh, application risk. Is it is it high risk? Maybe تخيل مثلاً application بيعمل processing ل customer data or something or passwords. Um, what is the CVSS score for the vulnerability uh, for the package? Um, if it's ten point zero, that means it's serious, which means we have to do like multiple things, like create campaigns, create pull requests, create an incident, stuff like that. This is another one where we think it's not sig um, significant. So like there's no active exploit, the method is not vulnerable, CVSS is 9.0, application risk is medium, it's fine. We can maybe skip it, but we don't have to skip it, we can just fix it like after, not urgent basically. And this is like moderate, another example. Any question? question? Okay. Last stage, we some more remediation. And remediation, كيف إحنا بنقدر نخلي ال vulnerability or the issue uh, get fixed. So في مشاكل كتير من موضوع هذا remediation. أنت ما بتقدر مثلاً تروح تحكي ال developer هي update to this package. So هدول أحد المشاكل الموجودين. There is of course hundreds of other problems. بس كيف بدك تلاقي the minimum version that remediates the vulnerability? كيف بدك تلاقي the first order dependency of the vulnerable package? Keep the XAML identification that transit dependency blockers. So, let's talk about them one by one. Minimum version problem. So, you have an application, it's uh, application. And this application is pulling a library called Foo. Okay? But Foo has two different vulnerabilities. One affects anything 2x before 2.4, 
and the second bit affects 2.x to 2.4.9. So the first affects anything less than 2.4.0. The second one affects anything 2.4.9. The common sense resolution in order to make update the 2.4.9, مظبوط. Then you want to fix both of them. So you can't just go and say to the developer, "Hey, fix this two things by updating to 2.40, 2.4.9." It doesn't make sense. So you have to ask in 2.4.9. How do you do that? Uh, Snake and DOM library is called Unified Range, and uh, what it does, basically, it sorts it sorts all the versions that exist in the repository, and <clears throat> excuse me, identify the vulnerable versions. And it excludes the vulnerable versions from the list. So it identifies those two versions and excludes them from the list. And then it concludes the immediate version, which is in this case 2.4.9. Now, the good thing is that it also has information about the latest version, which is 2.9.9. So it may also recommend updating to 2.9.9. However, this is a major update. This is a minor update, which means it may actually break stuff in your org. So the recommended one is 2.4.9. Okay, the other problem is first order dependency problem. So you have application um, has a library called A, and it's 1.0. This library is pulling another dependency called C and B, 3.0, 2.0. C is pulling another uh, two libraries, E and D. F is, in this case, is the vulnerable dependency, okay? So, and then to the developer, can you fix this? It doesn't make sense. You have to, this is another one, for example. You have to find the blocker, B, and tell B to go and fix it. How do you do that? E in this case as well. Is it the first repository? Are they brought from the first repository, full and A. If they, if they are, then you can fix it because the owner of full has authority and access to package A, so they can fix it. Um, what if it's not? Then it's a blocker. This is an example of a graph we created a long time ago. The pink dots are actually blockers. The green uh, are actually services running the vulnerable dependency. So unless those pink dots clear, those green dependencies, they won't be able to update. So it's very important to find uh, blockers in this case. OK, so what do we have so far? So we have a list of impacted services. Because we built dependency graph, we searched. We have triaged list and list of actionable data, which means we know what to remediate because we know the blockers and non-blockers. Hello, there are two types of issues. Issues that require immediate resolution and issues can wait. Issues that require immediate resolution, um, you have to basically create what we call resolution rules. This is an example of gradle resolution rules. It's not really very important, I would say. Um, but this because this is very specific to Java. But if you look at Yarn, for example, uh, you can specify the versions that uh, you restrict. So which means every time you build, it's going to pull that dependency fix. The other thing you can do is uh, force resolution in an NPM, for example. Um, so resolution, for example, you can say resolutions, uh, Hawk is the, the version, 4.2.1. And then you can run RM minus RF node modules, NPX, NPM force resolution, NPM install. So that means it's going to force that version to be installed. So, of course, it may break un unexpectedly. Um, so we, you need to have like testing and stuff. It's, it's very like complex subject, but think about like testing. You have to have integration tests, unit tests, and stuff like that. So you want to make sure that your code doesn't break. So encourage your developers to build tests. Um, another thing you can do, pull requests. So this is an example of automatic pull requests that you can create, which basically pumps the version automatically on GitHub. Pretty cool. There's another library called Renovate Bot from uh, White Source, and it does the same thing. 
ديبندنسي لوك ابديتس هلا لما تعمل انت ابديت للديبندنسيز كمان في عندك مشكله اللوكس اللوكس uh, اللي هو بيعمل لوكينج لسبيسيفيك فيرجن سو يو هاف تو ابديت اولسو لوكس ابديتس سو يو هاف تو سند بي ار تو دو لوك ابديتس ذا اذر ثينج يو كان دو از سكيورتي كامبين سو سكيورتي كامبينز تخيل مثلا انت عندك سيستم الديفلوبرز دي ار يوزنج اول ذا تايم تو ديبلوي ستاف يو كان لايك شو نوتيفيكيشنز ذير لايك هي يو هاف ذس بروبلم يو هاف تو فيكس Um, so it's kind of like a messaging or notification. This is a campaign uh, that we created uh, my previous job, which basically you see like the trends down of vulnerability. So you can see like how the vulnerability goes down. And so this is basically the numbers, uh, the number of uh, uh, services that are using the vulnerable package that goes down, which means it's a great thing. And the issues that can wait, uh, you can just do it every quarter. This is another example. So that one was like immediate because it was critical. But this one was like, oh, we can wait. It's fine. Future work. I think there is a lot of work needs to be done in the future method use detection. Um, this is like a very interesting area. So we want to find if the vulnerable method is actually ever called in the application. Uh, we need to have better remediation. Of course, this is one of the remediation strategies. Um, and you want to have organizational matrix and stuff like that. Um, so vulnerable dependency method, uh, this is an example. Um, you have the program execution. You want to find the vulnerable dependency here. Um, you can do this during runtime. Uh, so you can use like forward tracing in Java, hotspot severability agent. In JavaScript, you can use dynamic instrumentation. In Python, we use monkey patching. In Java, we use the hotspot severability agent, uh, which is amazing. It tells you like how many times the vulnerable method has been called. Uh, Slack bots remediation. If you use Slack, um, you can send notification to the developer. Tell them, hey, update, please. And uh, metrics, may, uh, it's very important for managers, you know, how many, uh, How often do you see open source vulnerabilities in the, our ecosystem? How long does it take to fix vulnerabilities? Uh, which part of the organization can we remediate quickly and what parts will take longer? Takeaways from this talk, um, I would say ignoring third party libraries risk in your code is like seeing a cavity and ignoring it. Like, and you're just ignoring it basically, and it gets worse and worse. Clear, um, empower your developers to use third party libraries, like, don't discourage them. But, uh, uh, make sure you're taking care of the OSS risk. Uh, I can emphasize a dish that's a مهم تبني automation. Or uh, automatic remediation um, is is hard, but it's basically doable. Like it's not like rocket science. It's it just needs time and thinking. These are some references uh, for the talk and questions. انه واحد بيقدر يستخدمه تو يعني كولكت ستاتستكس قد ايه كم مره المثد از كولد فرضا هل yes. الناس بيقدروا او بالواقع بيستخدموا مونكي باتشنج تو ريموف ذا فولنابيلتي يموها كومبليتلي ولا صعب؟ ام يو كان بس تخيل انت مثلا عندك كريتيكال اب از راننج اون برودكشن اند لايك يو ار بيسكلي لايك بلاينج وذ ذا فاير Because تخيل هذا الاب اللي عندك running on production and serving like a lot of traffic, you suddenly did monkey patching and then it breaks like traffic, production traffic. It's going to be like an incident, right? So it's very risky. And so that's why you need to report stuff as opposed to block stuff. Makes sense. Shukran. Yeah. Awesome. انا كمان اي جست اي هاف ا بيت اور ثانك يو سو ماتش فور ذا توك على ادينا زبري صراحه ما عمري فكرت بموضوع الديبندنسيز وقد ايش الديبندنسي هل بس اوبفيسلي uh, يعني حتى الشيء اللي بوينتد اوت سامي انه بالاخر حتى بصير عندنا لايبريز ذات ار ديبندنج اون لايبريز فبصير في عندك سايكل اتس انسين والشيء الثاني اللي كنت بحكي انه ون اوف ذا ويز تو جيت ريد اوف ات از شو اسمه اي جست انه بيكم مينتينرز اف يو سبورت ان اوبن سورس project become maintainers of it عشان ما يصير في شغله انه تعطيه لحد ذات هي doesn't trust عشان هذاك he was not going to give it to someone that doesn't trust unless انه فيش حدا ف the more maintainers we have the more شو اسمه the less that's going to happen هاي بصراحه ما فكرت فيها يعني it's a very, it's a very good point انه تصير maintainer بحيث انه انت تعمل review للكود بحيث انه انت 
you you see all the all the commits and stuff. Mm. Um, so that's that's actually a good point. Mm. Okay.